Praise the Lord. Welcome to Life Fellowship Church this morning, all you smiling, beautiful people. Amen. Step, stand on your feet, and let's go to God in worship. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? How many came with your shouting shoes on? How many came expecting something from God? How many came with your feelers out there because you're ready to receive? Amen? Hallelujah. Well, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. More than just a way to heaven. What does it mean to be His? To be formed in His likeness, show that we have a purpose. Come on. To be salt and light in the world, in the world. To be salt and light in the world. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 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 Let the redeemed of the
you so this morning. Come on, give him a shout of praise. Father, we invite you in this place this morning, God. You rule and you reign. We magnify you, God. We welcome you in this house today, God. Oh, Father, Holy Spirit, just saturate this place, God, with your mercy and your grace today. Come on, one more time, give him a hand clap of praise. He's worthy of it. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are so glad that you stepped into Life Fellowship this morning. I see a lot of new faces, a lot of old faces. Not that you're old, just you've been here a while. (laughs) But you all look beautiful. (laughs) But we want you to make each other feel welcome in the house of the Lord this morning. So we want you to step out of your aisle, find somebody, hug them up. I see some birthdays in the house. Well, no, she didn't come, did she? Amen. Praise the Lord. Love them in the Lord.
your mind refocused on the one who is and is to come and forevermore shall be. Amen. The one that has taken care of it. The one that has already set in place your miracle. The one that has already set in place your healing. The one that has already set in place the salvation for your family. Amen. We have to know in whom we believe, in whom we trust, and in whom we serve. Amen. Beyond a shadow of a doubt that no devil in hell can ever separate us from the love of God. Amen. Father, we thank you. Come on, just lift him up and give him praise right now. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for the finished work of the cross. We thank you, God, that you have already set in motion, God, everything that we have need of, Father. Everything, God, that we are going to have need of, Father. You already know, God, and you already set it in place. And we thank you for it. We thank you for it today, God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, we thank you for the cross, God. Come on, just begin to lift him up today. Just begin to praise him. Father, whatever we stepped in this place with today, God, we lay it at your feet, Lord. We get it covered under the blood of Christ. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all our sin and shame in love you came oh and came from amazing grace oh we thank you for this love Lord. come on and thank you for thank you for the veil pierced lord you washed
willing to come this morning. I feel that there are a lot of needs in this place this morning, whatever they are. I know a man who can. I know a man who can heal, who can touch, who can deliver, who can transform. And his name is Jesus. He paid a price for you on the cross, a mighty price for you on the cross. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He bought and paid for your salvation. He bought and paid for your healing. He bought and paid for everything that you would ever have need of. So we want you to come this morning and find a prayer partner to pray with this morning. I want us to sing that worthy is the lamb one more time. I know we were going to transition to another song, but I want us to sing it one more time because he's already bought and paid for it. All we got to do is believe that he can. Amen. Believe that he can and believe that he will do whatever it is. Heal, save, deliver. Amen. So we want you to come forth and find someone to pray with this morning. These guys know how to pray. They know how to touch heaven on your behalf this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, God. We're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. We thank you in advance, God, for everything that is going to take place in this place today. We thank you, God, for every healing. We thank you, God, for every salvation, Father. We thank you, God, for whatever it is, Lord. Nothing is too small or too big for you. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Yes, God. We thank you for the price you pay. Bearing all our sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace, Lord. We thank you for this. And just thank him for it. We thank you for the nail he stands. You washed me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness stands in
to say I'm glad to have uh, Doug and Doris back with us. They were in a car accident coming back from a vacation, five of them in the car, and, and it could have really, really been bad. But thank God for his protection over us. Got a couple bumps and bruises. God bless you, Doug. Oh, hallelujah. I want you right now just to join with me. Keith Houston, our piano player, had to take his wife to the hospital this morning. She has some terrible pain coming from her back all the way down to her foot. She has a struggle with this. Let's declare right now healing over Carrie is her name. If you just would join hands with somebody and let's just believe God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray over Carrie right now, Lord, that you would send your word and you would touch her, heal her, deliver her, raise her up. God, I speak the hand of God to move mightily upon her right now. I declare and decree healing and wholeness over that part of her body and those nerves in the name of Jesus. Be healed now in the name of the Lord. Let all discomfort go. Let all pain go from her. and Let her find relief. Let her find healing. In Jesus' mighty name I pray for the glory of God. Touch her now, Jesus. Amen. Everybody said, come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise and a shout of victory right now. Glory to God. I want to say I appreciate the worship team helping us this morning. And, and Nathan, I'm, I'm thankful we do have a backup when Keith is gone. And give Nathan a, a big hand of appreciation. Would you do that? And Oh, now, come on, before you're seated, turn to about three people and tell somebody it's all good in this neighborhood. Will you? It's all good in this neighborhood. Amen. Glory to God. My ushers are a little bit, um, uh, we're working today, a couple of them are gone. And so, Matt, come on, help us out, Brother Matt and Jason, these two big old guys. You see, Matt is Nathan's brother, you can tell, and these are my bouncers of the church. If I ever have any trouble out of y'all, these guys are coming to see you. I mean, they're gentle as teddy bears. They wouldn't hurt a fly. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Everybody say amen. i tell you what I'm going to do. Beverly, come on up and do announcements. Do you have some announcements for us, please? I may be glad the First Lady is one of the prettiest ladies in the world. I sure am. going to get in trouble, J.D.? No. <laughs> well, good morning, Life Fellowship Church. God is so good to us, isn't he? Well, I just have a few announcements, and I just want to welcome each and every person that's here today. And if you're a guest here today, thank you for coming to Life Fellowship Church. We pray that you are blessed supernaturally today, and we just invite you to fill out a connection card, drop it in the offering, and we'll send you more information about our church and some of pastor's favorite messages and we just want to be a blessing because we always have something hopping around here so we always have something to do and then also i want to say thank you to charles tomes who worked many days this week to get our sign functioning we had a computer glitch and so our sign at the road wasn't working uh, and charles took off work to come here and help life fellowship church and i just want to say thank you for that And then we have uh, Martin is in Kenya right now. He is uh, doing a missions work in Kenya. So uh, from Canada to Kenya, he's doing mission work. And I think I have some pictures, Michael, to show you. Um, Michael, can you pull those up for us? Nope, we don't have them. Well, he sent some pictures today, and, and he, he was telling us that God is just doing a supernatural work in Kenya and just moving in the in the churches there's a youth convention god is just doing miraculous miraculous things and continue to pray for him but i know also that he wants to send his love to you but he also wants to send his love to his little gracie today because her birthday is today so happy birthday from your daddy today we have some things coming up um we have an ice cream social coming up and the date is, I'm sorry, I got distracted by Gracie. That little look on her face almost made me cry. So she's a, such a sweetheart. 
So we have an ice cream social coming up. It's on the 17th. And if you could bring finger foods, and Mike and Kathy are going to furnish all the ice cream and all the toppings, and it's just going to be a great day. And they're going to take the calories out of the ice cream before it gets here. So that's for the young at heart. And we just invite, and that's for 55 and above, we just invite you to come up for that. And then on August the 16th, we are going to be having a prayer meeting, and it's called The Covering. Isn't that a powerful name, The Covering? And it's going to be from 6 to 7. We're going to come to the sanctuary. We're going to have stations that we can just pray for missions and different items in the church and, uh, and outreaches of ministries of the church and also for needs of families. So that want to mark that on your calendar. It's called The Covering. It's from 6 to 7. Of course, if you want to stay longer, we'll keep the doors open till midnight if you want it. So to, if you want to be here. We have August the 21st, Men's Life coming up. And they are saying it's real men and real stories, testimonies of what God is doing in the lives of men in this church. And, of course, there's always food that's going to be there, fajitas. You're going to have fajitas that night. And we want to make sure we make some special desserts for these guys, door prizes. And, guys, all we're asking you to do is sign up in the information booth or on the connection card. Uh, go ahead and buy your tickets. It's only $10. It'll pay for your meal, and I guarantee you it's going to be completely scrumptious that night. So that's going to be awesome. And then we have our Life Connection class has moved to August the 23rd. We're having a few date issues, but I think we got it straightened out now. So August the 23rd at Life Connection is for membership. If you want to know more information about the church, if you want to know the ministries about the church and things how you can be involved and things that you can do here, and then also just learn the vision of the church as well. That's going to be on August the 23rd. We just invite you to sign up so that we know you're coming and we make sure we'll serve you breakfast that morning. And we'll make sure you have a book and ready to learn about Life Fellowship Church. And then we also have, we have a lot going on this month, don't we? You know, school's starting back and everybody kind of, they're on that last end of their vacation, so we're just getting ready. But we have a lunch of leisure, and this is for those that are 50 and above. We're going to pile y'all all in the same room and have just a lunch. We're going to order barbecue that Sunday, and uh, you just have to reserve a a plate for us because we need to know how much barbecue to have here and that is ten dollars as well and that will uh, be a wonderful meal great fellowship and just a time of getting together and then tonight are y'all tired yet no y'all like all this going on don't you tonight we have a back to school night for teachers so if you are a school teacher school counselor school nurse if you're a homeschool teacher if you're a, a kid's life teacher here at Life Fellowship Church, we are going to honor you, and we're going to have an evening of, we'll have food, and we'll have fellowship, we have testimonies, we have ideas, pastor's going to bring an exhortation, it is just going to be an awesome night for all our teachers, because we want to prepare you for the 2014-2015 school year, because y'all are warriors going forth to minister to their children, so that's going to be tonight, all I need you to do is sign up, because we need to make sure that we have lots and lots of food, and I understand the dessert is already ready, and it's going to blow your socks off, so it's going to be a great night tonight, so we just invite you to come, God bless you guys very much, and I couldn't find my husband, I thought, where did he go, I was going to keep talking, she's always covering for me, and I appreciate that, amen, why don't you just lift your hands up to the Lord right now and just begin to bless his name. Would you do that? Just love the Lord. Give him some hallelujahs and some praise the Lord right now. Let the, let the congregation of the righteous give voice to praise right now. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We glory in your presence right now. We appreciate you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. So wonderful. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 I honor you today, Jesus. I honor you today, Jesus. Come on, take about one more minute. Would you do that? Let's just give voice to praise. Jesus, glory to God. Oh, just tell him you love him today. He's worthy, honor, and glory. I bless the name of the Lord. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. And the church said amen. Sometimes we just need to do that more, more often and let our hearts rejoice. I want to make just a couple of more announcements to that. And uh, the first one is that uh, Cody and Courtney... Uh, are so special to this church and uh, I'm going to ask Cody and Courtney to come and stand here at the front for just a moment and um, we're going to pray over them as they're going to endeavor to pick up the mantle for the children's ministry and where it has been going uh, Cody has a repertoire of costumes and creative ideas and uh, <laughs> he's uh, been so much involved in our doing dramas in the past and uh, they're going to serve our children in experiencing a high energy crusade format every Sunday morning uh, a year ago he did our children's crusade here at the church and, and it was as good as what we had ever had done by, by anyone else and I thought to myself he, uh, he is just uh, the man for this transition that we're having uh, he's going to continue to build on a great foundation that has already been in place and we're going to believe God together for our kids to experience the maximum ministry that they can possibly have, not only on Sundays, but on Wednesday nights. Our children's ministry will be referred to as the Kids Life Ministry. Everybody say that with me, Kids Life Ministry, with a new logo that's going to match our Life Fellowship logo. And today, um, they're going to teach about how to glow into all the world. And they're going to have flashlights back there. It's, it's really exciting. And in the weeks ahead, there's more that is going on. But um, there's something that uh, dropped into my heart about a year ago. And with a new, uh, with what are involved in our children's ministry, and I've been studying, weighing it out, and observing it very carefully. And I learned a long time ago not to just act on something quickly without doing your homework first. How many of you know what I'm talking about? So Beverly has been engaged with many of the parents, and we've had... Uh, had people in position to observe our children, our worship service, uh, the children of the guests that come, the, the guests that do come with children for the first time, and uh, we've been so glad to have them in our service, and we've discovered that we feel like it would be most beneficial, not just for the parents, but specifically for the children to be engaged in their own worship service, to be taught how to worship the Lord with songs that are full of energy, and on their level and teaching and ministry that would relate to them to their age but also altar calls that would specifically be directed to their spiritual need and so we have felt like with school starting transition in our children's ministry that has been taking uh, place that right now is the perfect time for this to happen so in two weeks everybody say two weeks on August the 24th the kids life ministry is going to begin promptly at 10 a.m. simultaneous with our service and so we we want to ask the parents to check your children in the foyer right before 10 o'clock and we will have uh, people assisting you to escort them to the room we will have this so streamlined that there won't be any lines but we do ask for you to come just a little bit earlier to check the kiddos back there uh, to so that you'll be able to join us right at 10 o'clock when our service begins and, uh, and our service is going to begin at 10 o'clock promptly. And so make sure you get here with us. We're going to do that. And sometimes we get a little bit tight in practice and so forth, but we're going to start beginning at 10 o'clock promptly. And so this plan is to have the children uh, that we have, they're going to be joining us quarterly so that we can give them some attention and also uh, prayer blessing over them. And the blessing that I do over the kids every week is going to be available in the back for parents to bless their kids. Uh, Cody is going to be blessing the children. Uh, all the other uh, pastors, children, children pastors are going to be blessing the children also each week. And so, but we will make that available to you. So we're excited about what the kids uh, are, what is in store for the children. And we're going to believe God for great things over the kids ministry. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise right now. Amen. I want Cody and Courtney to face me for just a moment. Some of our prayer team come and stand behind them just real quickly. And I'm just going to pray blessings over them. And I'm going to pray an anointing over them. 
and uh, I appreciate them and their dedication. Courtney, of course, is going to be in here for the worship before we let her go back there to help Cody. Stretch your hands toward them right now. Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus, I thank you for your blessing. I thank you for the call of God. Lord, I thank you for the advancement of your kingdom. And I just pray over Cody and I pray over Courtney, Father, a, su a supernatural anointing to be upon their life as they step into this role, ministering to the children. Lord, I pray that you would cause them to have an articulation, a heart that will relate to those kids that they will never, ever, ever be the same again. I declare this over you today in the name of Jesus. I declare a special anointing upon you now in the name of the Lord and the glory, anointing, and direction of the Holy Ghost be upon you now. In Jesus' name I pray for the glory of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, there was a mistake on the announcement on the prayer covering. That will be August the 16th. That is next Saturday night at 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. And uh, if you want to stay later, uh, you can, but officially it will be. How many of you are thankful for Life Fellowship Church? I am too. I love this church. And um, I believe that God is here in a very special, wonderful way. Uh, I was heard about a man that went to a church and he was dressed in uh, rags, not very good clothes, and he came. And a lot of the members got upset at this guy coming to church dressed like he was. So they told the pastor, and he felt pressure to go to the man and say, Sir, we do appreciate you coming here, but, uh, you know, it's about what you're wearing. And uh, he said, maybe you ought to just pray and ask Jesus, what should you wear that it might be right about, you know, kind of in line with what all of us are wearing. And so the man went home, and next week he came back dressed exactly the same the previous week. And the pastor came to him and said, Sir, didn't I ask you to pray and ask Jesus what you should wear? He said, I did, but he said he'd never been to your church before. <laughs> how many of you know we're glad Jesus is here this morning? And how many of you know we're glad that you're here this morning? Whether you're red, yellow, black, or white, poor, rich, it doesn't matter, polyester, <laughs> cotton, or uh, whatever you might be wearing, denim, it doesn't matter what you wear. Do you know that uh, Lila, are you here this morning, Twyla? Uh, Lila. Lila was here. Did you know that it was, I think, about a week ago, was it last Sunday? Last Sunday, she was getting out of her car, and a lady was walking her daily walk by us, and they struck up a conversation, and she had her jogging shorts and all that on, and... Um, and Lila said, you know, how you doing? And she always, I've been wanting to come to this church. And uh, Lila said, come on in. She says, well, I can't come in. I'm in shorts and I'm in a T-shirt and so forth. And Lila said, you come on in. We'll welcome you just like you are. That woman came into church last Sunday and she got tremendously blessed in the house of the Lord. Stayed the whole time and said, I'm coming back to Life Fellowship. I love it here. And I appreciate you taking the initiative to invite her to our church. And um, I believe for great things. Uh, Matthew 10, 18. Y'all ready to receive an offering this morning? I want our ushers to uh, prepare to, to uh, serve you today. The Bible says, freely you have received, freely give. And, and I do believe it's important that every offering time that we have, it becomes a time of consideration, joy, and blessing. How many of you know it is a joy and a blessing to be able to give to the Lord today? And so freely you have received, freely give. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Each one of us has his purpose in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly, nor necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, I've often learned that it's not the amount that we give, but it's the attitude in which we give it. When we're sowing our seeds, now we all tithe. That, that, that is part of it is scriptural. We give our offerings, our, uh, succeed, with a, succeed with a seed that we're doing this summer. But how many of you know when the attitude is right, the amount will always be right? But the key is whenever we give, it's not to be grudgingly. It's not of necessity. It's not compulsion. It's not to feel obligated. It's not out of duty. But the Bible says God loves a what kind of giver? Cheerful, cheerful giver. And so this is a particular attitude of giving, a kind of giving that God delights in. That word cheerful means, and I'm going to say it right here in a minute, but cheerful means laughter. It means delight, exuberance, joyfulness. I remember the first time I was in a service, and we do that here all the time now, 
But when we say it's offering time, I was in the service, and the people started clapping. They started shouting. They started showing exuberance to God. And I thought to myself, this is a church that loves how to give, that knows how to give, that gives cheerfully. How many of you know the Bible says in Acts 20, 35, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive? And so, yes, we do receive by our giving. And, yes, uh, we gain by giving and we lose by withholding. And, yes, there's tremendous blessing upon those who give generously to the Lord. But why is it more blessed to give than to receive? It Because it shows we're putting God first in our life. It shows that we're trusting God is our source in our life. It's showing uh, that, that there is a clear indication of our freedom from fear of holding on to our money. It's a clear indication that we've not let greed conquer us, but that we have hearts of, of giving. And uh, there's no pride in us. And it's not about a me first attitude. It's about I'm joyfully giving to what uh, to the house of God and to the things that God wants me to do. So it's it's simply a, a spirit of liberality. And just like we have freely received, how many of you know we should freely give out today? And so today I want us to give uh, with full of joy. I want us to be exuberant. Uh, how many of you are thankful for what God's done and blessed in your life? I want you just to set your pens or paper or whatever, and let's just give the Lord a big shout of praise and cheerfulness and a smile because we're blessed to have what God has done in our own life. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Smile at somebody on your right or on your left and tell somebody I'm thankful for what God's done for me. Amen. Ushers, come ahead and make all checks out to LFC and make sure you designate it in the offering envelope. You can also give online and uh, through the paperless, and we're so thankful for your faithfulness today. Father, I thank you this morning for your goodness to us, and I thank you for your mercy. I speak favor, peace, and increase upon your people. Go before us and open doors that need to be opened and close doors that need to be closed. We recognize you as the very source of our life, and we give you honor and glory in this moment. And we do it cheerfully in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Go right ahead, ushers, and receive this offering in the wonderful name of the Lord. Well, now look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. Oh, he saved me. Yes, it's time. All the kids, come on up. Come on up, kids. children in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I bless you with sound minds, health in your bodies, angels to surround you all the days of your life. I bless you from children to know the holy scriptures that is able to make you wise into salvation. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. God bless you kids. I love you. Have a great time. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn over to 1 Kings 17. In just a moment, First Kings 17. If you want to follow along in your bulletin, there is a handout that you can go along. I want to say I appreciate the service last Sunday. How many of you were here last Sunday? Yeah, wasn't that a wonderful service? I tell you what, I felt so many testified to me. They felt such an anointing and power in the entire service that we had. 
and uh, I know it went two and a half hours, but I don't apologize for that. We would never, we never do that unless God is just strong, moving in such a the way that He did. And so uh, I appreciate you being faithful to that and lingering in that presence, and for what God did in our service. And um, I may be thankful for what God will do in your life when you just let Him and open up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Very famous scripture here. Let me read it. Verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Verse 2. And the Lord, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook that I have commanded, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan, and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And I want to read the rest of that in just a moment. But I want to talk about God has your miracle in motion. Say that with me one more time. God has your miracle in motion. When you stop and read verse 7, it said the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. It looks more like there is a mess in motion instead of a miracle in motion. Elijah is by the brook Cherith, and the brook dried up. How many of you know we've, been, we've all been in situations that seem like it's getting worse instead of getting better? You're looking at the situation and you're thinking to yourself, if things keep going like this, it's not going to be good here before too long. Something has got to give at some point. And on top of that, I really didn't do anything different. I'm at this brook here led by the Lord. I obeyed the Lord. I said the things he's supposed to, he told me to say. Things are going along fine. I was experiencing great provision from God. I can hear Elijah just thinking to himself, you know, man, these ravens have been feeding me bread and flesh every morning and evening. You know, these uh, ravens, you know, they're half-blind birds that are, have a nature uh, that is against uh, being around uh, humans. And uh, here they are on assignment. They're the ones bringing me bread and flesh. Uh, I can see these ravens flying around the brook Cherith, and, uh, you know, they're half blind, so they can say, do you see a tish bite down there somewhere? And he go, yeah, I think I see him down there. And they bring him bread and flesh every morning and every evening. And uh, birds on assignment. And so here they are. I, I can see what God is doing is so marvelous. And how many of you know we've all testified of God's provision in our life? Yes, we have. We, we've seen and experienced that God is not withholding resources uh, he, he's, he's not without resources to be able to supply anything we ever need by whatever measure he desires. And uh, when we are in the center of God's will, God has there. How many of you know where God guides, he does provide? And so he's been faithful to us. He has been gracious to us. But how many of you ever been in a situation where the brook was drying up and you're going, what is up with this? I know I, know I was doing what God told me to do. So what's up with this brook situation What's up with this experience in my life that just seems to keep drying up? It's, it's ever before me. Here he is at the brook chair. That's where he'd been staying for a while. It was right in his face. He said, I can't ignore it. It's right where I live. It's something that is affecting every part of my life. And it, every day there's a lessening. Every day there's a diminishing. Every day there's a declining. And it looks like it's on a downward spiral. And, and the verse 7, it's interesting. It says it came to pass after a while. Not only that, but this is one of those slow deals that doesn't look like it's going to end anytime soon. How many of you ever been in a situation where you go, uh-oh, this one ain't going to be fixed overnight? Y'all are quiet in this Presbyterian church today. I love the Presbyterians. It's not going to be fixed overnight. The brook didn't dry up overnight. Just by the tone of the verse, something is changing and it doesn't look in the natural that it's going to be very good. Sometimes in God's dealing with us, 
How many of you know he doesn't show us the entire picture all at once? He tells us how much we need to know and when we, we need to learn to trust him and obey him with what we know to do, and then he will reveal the next step to us. Psalms 119 verse 105 said, The word is a lamp to my feet, and it's a light to my path. Just right where I'm walking, not way off down the road somewhere, but right where I'm walking, right here today. I love walking in the aisle of uh, Walmart and also Kroger in the frozen food section. And yes, I do get uh, Bluebell ice cream every once in a while. But I love walking there. We were there just last week at Kroger, and I was, I, and nobody was there, Harley. So I had the whole aisle to myself. And you know when you walk down the aisle, the lights come on right where you walk. Not down all the way to the end, but just right where you're walking. And I love to go up like this, and I love to go back like that. And I love, and Beverly goes, Danny, come on, we're busy. We got to get, we got to get home. But I'm playing down the road because I love the light coming on right where I'm walking. How many of you know if you're faithful in the situation you're in with what you know to do, God is going to direct your path into the next season of your life, and, and God does have an answer for that dried-up brook. You just got to learn to be patient. God is coming with a word. Notice the brook may not, it didn't just get low, but the Bible says it absolutely dried up. Sometimes life can take some funny turns in our life. One thing I've learned, and that is that you've got to learn to, to live in a constant state of transition and change in this earthly life because nothing stays the same for very long. There's always going to be, it came to pass after a while in your life. Things are not always going to be like they always were. There's a continual stretching in our life. There's a continual testing in our life, a continual constant exercise of our faith about what are we going to do in this next season of our life? What are we going to do after this brook is dried up? Where do we go? What, what do we do? Everything God does in our life, including the circumstances we do not understand, is preparing us for something greater. Hallelujah. Can I get a bigger amen than that? We may not be responsible for the circumstance, but we're responsible for our character in the midst of the circumstance. We may not can help what happens to us. We can help how we respond to what happens to us. It may not be our fault, but we can, how we respond to it is our responsibility. And those quick fixes situations, they don't really build long-term establishing, strengthening, lasting faith. We are sometimes dealing with it for a while. Some, I would like for every problem I have just to be quick and fixed the next day. But how many of you know those kind of problems do not build long-term establishing, strengthening, lasting faith? Sometimes it's going to take dealing with it for a while. There's patience, steadfastness, strengthening comes into play. And so we got to ask, what is my response when I'm in a situation? Am I blaming God? Why is this happening to me? Am I always complaining to other people about what, what's going on? Are we trying to control the situation? And, and there's no peace, and we're trying to push something through. Amen. Sometimes we, we got to realize, how is my response to this situation? God is going to work all of that controlling thing out of you. He's going to work all of that blaming, taking no responsibility. He's going to work all those things out of your life so that you have a faith that is lasting, enduring, strengthening, establishing, and you're ready for the next season of your life. God wants Elijah tested, tried, and true at the brook Cherith because just around the corner was Carmel in chapter 18, which would be the greatest showdown of that day where Elijah and his faith would pray fire down out of heaven and consume the, uh, the, the burnt offering in the altar and the people of Baal, amen, that had been serving Baal would turn and, and trust the true and the living God. Elijah could be used in that capacity to call fire down in chapter 18 because he was tested and proven, amen, in this capacity in chapter 17 in this scripture. Before Elijah would reach those specific places of victory and advancement and accomplishment, he was to be tested and proven by God. The lesson I've learned here is never be careful not to short-circuit what God has for you because you got weary in well-doing. Don't short-circuit what God is doing because of the situation you're in and it doesn't look favorable. God wants to take you from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Hallelujah. God wants to extract out of your life everything that's not of Him in this present season so that He can move you to the next season. If He moved you ahead to the next season before some things were dealt with in your life, 
it would be disastrous in the next season of your life. Hallelujah. I'll, I'll amen myself today. I know it's good. Never let your resolve weaken because of the frustration of a circumstance. There is always a bigger work at play. There is a bigger picture to see. How many of you know it's not just what you go through, it's what you grow through that counts? Being proven is when the brook dries up and life doesn't make sense and your world is turned upside down and you're not going to let go, you're not going to turn back, you're not going to jump out of God's will, but you're going to stay the course with what God has for you. That's being proven and that's being tested and that's being tried. The easiest thing to do is bail. The easiest thing to do is jump ship. The easiest thing to do is, is do something else outside of God's will. But I'm here to tell you, to be proven, tested, tried, and true is to hold the course even when the brook is drying up and even when you don't understand what is going on and even when the situation seems opposite of what God spoke to you previously. But you're going to hold the course because you know your God is faithful and you don't know how and you don't know when, but you know He's going to make a way where there is no way for your life. When you learn to move on God's divine timetable and schedule, you're going to move right into your miracle on His schedule. And the fact is that while your brook is drying up, God already had a miracle set in motion to bless your life and the life of others around you because God is a faithful God. God has a word that's going to set you on a new course to reach a new level and to experience a new boldness and a new confidence in God that you did not know previously. So if you're in a situation and your brook is drying up and the water level is going down, just hold steady. Amen. Keep praising God in the midst of it. God is going to make a way for you where there is no way. Now, like Elijah, from all accounts, he was a very common, average, ordinary man, but he did extraordinary things for God. If you look at verse 1, he stood here before Ahab. And, and James 5.17 said, Elijah was a man of like passions as we are. He had a nature similar to our feelings and affections, just like you and me. How many of you know, but he was a world changer and he was a history maker. He was a Tishbite from Gilead. And this is those Rocky Mountain region of Israel. They were rugged, unrefined. They were uh, kind of a backward type, ill-mannered type of people with no special training, education, political correctness, or financial resources. But how many of you know that when God calls somebody, he doesn't check on how much money you have? When God calls somebody, He doesn't check on what kind of family background you came from. He doesn't check on how polished you are or cultivated you are or refined you might be. God looks for people who are yielded, who are surrendered, who have abandoned themselves to the will of God. 1 Corinthians 1.26, you see her calling, Brother, not many wise after the flesh, not many mighty or noble, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, that the things that are mighty... To... Anyway, there it is. Hallelujah. <laughs> It's all messed up in my notes. Somehow my typewriter, my dragon thing, I usually went crazy on me just there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm going to proofread just a little bit better next time. Hallelujah. How many of you know God is looking for ordinary people with surrendered hearts so he can do extraordinary things through them to have an impact and make a difference and bring about change in people's life? Elijah had a sense of God consciousness. Verse 1, he said, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand. I, and I like that. Sometimes we just read the scripture and we move past it. And it's a little warm in here. If somebody can uh, turn the air down just a little bit. Hallelujah. I know there's no lukewarm in the house, but you're either hot or cold. As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand. Although Elijah was standing in the presence of King Ahab, the king of Israel, he wanted Ahab to know. I might be standing before you, King Ahab, but there is a bigger king that I serve that is standing, that is here, and his presence is here with me now. I stand before God as the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand. I might be in your presence, but there's somebody here who's greater than you are, and it's in his presence that I stand. Elijah had developed a sense of of the presence of God. Amen to God. And, and there were people serving Baal. There was Ahab had turned away from God. But it, the prophet Elijah wanted him to know, hey, I stand here. I'm commissioned. I'm called. And the God that I stand in the presence of 
He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. There is none like him in the heaven above or the earth beneath. It is in his presence I stand to make this declaration. How many of you know it's important that we understand that no matter what we're facing in life, that the presence of God is with you right here and right now in your situation? You stand before him today. He has said, I will never leave you so that we might boldly say the Lord is my helper I will not fear what men shall do to me can I tell you God's presence how many of you are glad greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world no matter what devil you face no matter what people that you're around that may be turning from God or what's going on at work or what's going on at home you can stand there knowing greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world Elijah's name means God is my salvation or my strength when, when God is the strength of your life whom are you going to be afraid of Wherever you go, God's presence is there. Whenever you speak, God's presence is there. Wherever you am, whenever you act, God's presence is there. And even when your brook is drying up, how many of you know God's presence is still going to be there? How many of you glad Acts 17, 28, in him we live and move and have our being? Psalms 118, the Lord is on my side. I will not be afraid what men shall do to me. Elijah also knew the word of God. He was a prophet of God. Deuteronomy 28:23 says that if the people did not hearken to the Lord their God, then the heavens over their head would be brass. Ahab and Jezebel had turned the nation away from God to serve Baal worship, which was the sun god, the fertility god. And God said, it's now time for my people to get back on track. And he used Elijah to go stand before Ahab with a word that he took from that scripture and to point and say, I'm going to let you know who the real God is of Israel is are y'all with me today I'm gonna let you know it's not Baal is not the real God of creation he's not the real Lord of creation he's not the true God but the true God is the living God and it's not gonna rain it's not gonna even give any dew until according to my word according to Deuteronomy 28 23 now sometimes God allows sometimes some extreme things to happen for people to wake up to find out who God really is I know a lot of people don't like what I'm kind of about saying right now, but that's all right. I've got the microphone today. Amen. I know this, that sometimes God will allow extreme things to happen in your life. And thank God he does if it turns you back to him. Sometimes people don't change because they see the light, but they will change when they feel the heat. It's important that we know the word and have understanding of the times we live in. I don't know about you, but if I wasn't serving God and I see all the things happening on the horizon right now and all the extreme things that are going on, I would think something is up with this. Amen. Earthquakes, people going crazy, all that's going on in Israel. We who know the word, we understand to watch Israel and what's going on over there. I believe that there is a timetable and I believe there is a divine schedule and I'm going to believe that the coming of the Lord is imminent. It can happen at any moment and with what's going on, I've got my eyes looking up and I'm ready for the coming of the Lord. Still believe in a rapture. Are you all with me? Now, I'm not looking for an escape hatch, but I'm looking to dominate and conquer until Jesus comes. But if he comes back, he's going to find Danny Robinson preaching, amen, praying, amen, rebuking devils and demons and going over and not under. And I'm going to stand my ground and bring in the harvest, hallelujah, until he comes. The Bible says it's time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. And I believe it's time for people to wake up because we... we what people have been putting their trust in isn't going to help them. But how many of you know there is a God? He's a creator. He's the redeemer. And he's our soon coming king and we can put our trust in him. He is our refuge and our fortress. He's a very present help in the time of our trouble. So yes, of course, the brook dried up because he said it wasn't going to rain. But according to my word, he was the one who prophesied it. There he's at the brook and now the water brook is drying up because he was the one who said. Have you ever just done what God wanted you to do and all of a sudden it looks like it, everything's going opposite of how it's going to affect your life? But God has a miracle in motion. And if you don't go backward, throw in the towel, give up, quit, but if you'll stay the course, you're going to run right smack dab into the middle of your miracle. If, you, if I know my miracle's in motion, three things are going to happen. Number one, I'm not going to lose heart. I'm not going to lose heart in the heat of it. Now, I want you to get the picture, and I just want to just repeat it, something. 
you're in the will of God, everything's falling into place, your needs are being met on a regular basis, you, don't, you haven't disobeyed or moved out of God's will, but all of a sudden there's this extreme uneasiness from what is happening right in front of your eyes. The water level of your brook is going down. The rocks that used to be covered by water are now scorching in the sun. Every day that passes, the water line of the brook decreases, and you realize it can't get, keep going like this because it's going to affect me in a lot of different ways. But the brook that you've always known and was always refreshing to you has now come to a place that it has dried up. Sometimes it's that job you always counted on suddenly taken from you. A loved one has become challenged with someone in the family that, with a sickness and there's been some major adjustments that have been made. A relationship between friends or family or even a marriage has become strained. Maybe the passion in your relationship with God doesn't seem like it was what it once was. It is what it once was. Whatever the picture in your life, one thing for sure, you know this for a fact, you're in a state of transition and a state of change and where you are at is very unpleasant. It's very unnerving and it's uneasy. Your emotions are being stretched to the very limit. What you are experiencing and going through is requir requiring a strength you've never had to exert before, a fortitude you've never had to utilize, and an endurance you've never had to apply like this before. A demand has been placed upon you that you were not counting on concerning this situation in your job or profession or around your life. Can I tell you, don't lose heart in the heat of it. The same God whose presence was real to you in the last situation when you stood before Ahab is the same God who is present with you even while the brook is drying up. There were some things Elijah had to learn at the brook. Every day he watches the water level decrease. What's going on in his heart? How do you not lose how do you not lose heart in the heat of something? Number one, you stay focused. Hebrews 12, 3, consider him. Who's him? Jesus. Lest ye be wearied and faint or lose heart in your mind. To, to, to be faint in the King James means to lose heart. So to consider Jesus is to constantly think about, meditate over and over. Number two, stay in the word of God. Joshua 1, 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do all that I've commanded. Do you know it is important to stay in the Word? You know, as a pastor of 30 years, you know, sometimes you don't feel like got to get another one. But you know what? I have learned, and I've done this for years, I make sure my own spirit is fed first before I'm studying to preach what I need to preach on a Sunday morning. I've got to have the Word for me personally. It's something that I thank God He has taught me from day one to stay saturated in the Word of God. It doesn't depart from me. You come to me with any situation or problem, I'm directing us back to the Word of God. That's all we've got. But how many of you know it's enough to get us through? Ephesians 5.19, start singing to yourself a little bit. Sing to the Lord. Amen. Singing to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and make, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Learn to keep a song on your mouth no matter what you're going through. Start singing out around your house. I can't sing worth a flip and barely can testify to that. But I make a joyful noise. Did you raise your hand at that? that was a... <laughs> but I make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And I'm not singing songs just about God. I'm singing to God himself. Because you know what? He's singing over me. You know that? He's rejoicing over me with joy. He's resting in his love over me. And the bride comes back with songs of joy and rejoicing and gladness in the heart to the King of kings and to the Lord of lords, to the bridegroom. And I learned that no matter what I'm facing or going through, if I keep a song in my heart, amen, the heaviness and the burden, amen, is cast upon the Lord and he sustains me and he doesn't suffer the righteous to be moved. Learn to take courage, Joshua 9. Have I not I commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Don't be dismayed. For the Lord God is with you. Most everywhere courage is mentioned, it's mentioned with the word good. Good courage. Because it's good to have courage in your life. 
Sometimes you got to take courage because in the natural only fear is there. But how many of you know you got to reach out and sometimes take a hold of courage and pull it toward you and take a hold of it. And the way you take a hold of courage is staying in the word, is learning to sing to the Lord. It's learning to be around the saints of God. No matter what you're going through, you may have fear trying to overwhelm you. But when you start singing to the Lord, when you start quoting the word of God, when you start confessing the word of God, you are taking hold of a courage that is a good courage because it's that kind of courage that's going to cause you and propel you to get through what you're going through and you're going to know that God is with you and you're going to get to the other side. It causes you to be steadfast, established, alert, and persistent in your life. Number five, let patience have its perfect work in the midst of what you're going through. How many of you know when the brook starts drying up and the water level is going down, patience is going to have to have a little work in there. Amen. It's like me. I like going down the frozen food aisle of Kroger and Walmart, but I don't like standing in the lines at the checkout. Patience has to have its perfect work in Brother Danny in that area. I have fun at the grocery store, just so you know. James 1.3, in the message, it says, You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and it shows its true colors. Don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you can become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. Boy, we want out of those quick, don't we? But don't get out of it prematurely before it's right time. Sometimes if it's aborted prematurely, the, the very problem itself is not healed correctly. And what it was doing in us is not finished. Hallelujah. Number six, learn to trust him when you can't trace him. Learn to trust God. Trust him when you can't trace him. How many of you know he's always there? Deuteronomy 32, 11, as the eagle stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. Sometimes God is dismantling the nest where we have grown comfortable for a while. He's doing it little by little, piece by piece, and twig by twig. Twig by twig. Somebody say blessing Jesus today. Amen. <laughs> and then he begins to pressure us over the cliff. And the Bible in that scripture says that the eagle begins to spread its wings first. Showing us and giving you a picture of what he wants from your life. So that you will learn to spread your wings that you didn't know you really had. Sometimes you've got to jump and grow wings on the way down. Hallelujah. Teaching us to soar in heights of heaven we have never knew that we could. Teaching us that when we face storms we thought would tear us apart, instead they're going to carry us to places we've never been before in God. If your brook seems to be drying up, there seems to be some abrupt changes and transitions in your life. You may not understand it all, but no. That what you're facing is going to connect you to the next level of where you're going to see tremendous miracles in your life. And God already has miracles set in motion for you to experience. It may not seem like it right now, but God is working in your behalf. It may, not look, it may look just the opposite of what has taken place from what you thought you heard God say. And even you know you've heard God say. And it looked like it's working just the opposite but just know God is preparing you for something greater than you can ever imagine in your life. Number two, know that something good is happening even when you can't see it. David said in Psalms 27, I would have fainted except I believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. He said, I would have fainted. I would have lost heart. But in the midst of what I was going through, I believed to see something right where I was in the land of the living. I believe to see the goodness of God. God has a plan, you see, to propel you into your destiny, but the key to keep yourself, keep yourself in a position to hear the word of the Lord. Look at verse 8 and 9. The word of the Lord came unto him, saying, 1 Kings 17, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, this is when the brook dried up. This is after verse 7. The word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, and behold, to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. 
Elijah did not have to search for the next step. He kept himself in a right attitude and in a right frame of mind, and the word came to him. He didn't have to go to it. Boy, that was worth all morning right there long. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord came unto him right where he was at, right when his brook was drying up. Y'all ready for a word that God is going to send to you right where you're at right now? It came to him in the middle of the dried up brook. See, God knows how to get a word to you wherever you may be in your life. When you're watching the water level go down, just know that God is preparing your miracle. It's already in motion, and a word from heaven is about to penetrate your circumstance and your situation. It's about to penetrate right where you are at. There's no sense in being stressed out or worried or anxious or frustrated. You don't have to go to the Word. The Word is going to come to you if you keep yourself in a frame of mind to trust God. See, you've got to trust God because the answer may not for, be for that brook to fill back up. It may not be for you to move to another brook just down the Jordan there. It may not be for the time of rain just yet. You know, we Pentecostals and Charismatics, we sometimes our discernment level is pretty low. Our brook is drying up. We go, I rebuke this dry, brook drying up in the name of Jesus. Sometimes the answer isn't rebu rebuking a dried up brook. Sometimes it's not claiming this or claiming that over that or, or, or rebuking devils. I rebuke the devil over this situation right now. How many of you know the devil didn't even have nothing to do with it? Hallelujah. How many of you know you can, re you can rebuke a brook drying up all day long, but if it's that other kind of situation, what we're talking about, that water level is going to keep going down no matter how much you're buking. All you're buking in the world ain't going to do one thing for it. There are certain things I do rebuke, but sometimes there are some situations where the brook is drying up that all the buking in the world ain't going to do. Hallelujah. What you need to do is keep yourself in the love of God. Keep yourself in praise and worship. Keep yourself in the word of God. Keep your mind in a, in a state and your spirit open to you where you can hear. And at the right time, even if the brook has already dried up, you don't have to go to the word. The word is going to come to you because God is faithful to his people. You see, the word of God found me in 1979 on a scallop boat. It was June and it was a Thursday. And I won't go into all of it, but just as a young teenager who took on more than he could ever bargain for, off the coast of the Outer Banks, about 50 miles into the Atlantic Ocean, on that first real trip on a scallop boat, around mean, mean people, patches over their eyes, pirate people, I mean, real, for real, this was not this was not my sister's growing this was not this was some mean mean people I started witnessing to them they said shut up I said but Jesus loves you I said I said shut up I don't want to hear it I said but Jesus died for you he goes how long can you tread water and I said okay I'll be quiet for a while y'all y'all laughing but y'all have been quiet too out there 90 foot scallop boat ironically called the amazing grace was the name of the boat captain daniels first lieutenant steve i'll never forget him there's about eight of us but i am in a mess i am seasick homesick and if you don't work out there and they've hired you on and you don't carry your weight it ain't good just trust me on that i couldn't eat nothing for three days throwing up because of seasickness my shift from 12 to 6, I ended at midnight, went into my room. All the other bunks were in that one little room where we were. But in my little bunk, I began to cry out to God. And the word that my dad paid me a dollar per verse to, to remember, Psalms 23. Six verses. I got six dollars for it. Because while he was itinerating, my sister would sing. My mom would talk about Japan. My dad would preach. Let's find what Danny can do, sing. 
I sang. He said, no, we can't be letting you sing. But you quote Psalms 23. So I quoted Psalms 23 all over the churches of the North Texas District as a boy. It was up here. But that night, the word of the Lord found my heart in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean on a scarlet boat surrounded by mean, mean people. And all I could do was cry out, and verse 4 came to me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And when I said those words out loud, for thou art with me, the Lord appeared to me. And God, I saw at that moment, God, I knew God had this. I knew he had planned my life. I knew what then that he had the next season of my life already scheduled for me. He had already gone before me and made the crooked path straight. He had a young girl in Cleburne waiting on me to get to Waxahachie to marry her. Amen. He had a church in Kennedale, Texas waiting for me to come to Kennedale, Texas. I saw it all clearly of what God was going to do with the. I didn't see it, all of it down the road. I don't know all the things I was going to face, but I knew that God had this, and the word of the Lord came to me in that moment, in that night, and my life was never the same again, and I realized that God already had my miracle in motion, and all I had to do was put my trust and my faith in Him. God will send His word to you in the middle of the fiery furnace where you're at, in the middle of the pain or the hurt, the home, the job, in the middle of this service, God will send a word to you and you will never be the same. The word that goes forth out of his mouth, it shall not return unto him void, but it shall accomplish into the thing whereunto I have sent it. It will prosper into the thing whereunto I have sent it. It will not return void. It is believing to see his goodness. He said, I I, I would have fainted except I believe to see the goodness of God in the middle of your dried up brook. you got to keep going. You're believing that His favor is working on your, half, on your behalf even when you don't see it. You're believing that He has gone before you and made the crooked places straight. You're believing in the middle of it that if God closes one door, He is going to open another door, but I'm going to keep myself believing and in the right frame of mind because God is right on time with my life and that Word is coming to me. Believing that out of this mess, a miracle is in motion. And last one, I'm going to watch the hand of God accurately and precisely in my life. I'm going to watch the hand of God work accurately and precisely in my life. He said, Arise, get up to Zarephath that belongs to Sidon, dwell there. I've commanded a widow woman. He arose and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the city, behold, a woman, a widow woman, who was gathering sticks, he called to her. He said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, as the Lord God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil of cruise, oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in, dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Now, what I want you to understand here is that when God works, he works with precision and he works with accuracy. God had already commanded a widow woman to sustain Elijah. Now, sometimes your miracle is going to come from very unlikely sources, but don't ever prejudge what God is up to. I said don't ever prejudge what God is up to because it didn't fit in your paradigm of what you think. Really, God, i got to go to this widow woman And really, Lord, you want me to ask her to give me the little cake first? Sound like a Pentecostal preacher. Amen. Almost. Luke mentions this woman in Luke 4, 25. But truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heavens were shut up for three years and six months. But there was a great famine throughout the land. But none of them was Elijah sent to except to Zarephath in the region of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. It's mentioned in the New Covenant. God is going to bring provision not only to Elijah, but to a widow woman and to her son. A Gentile widow woman, stranger to the commonwealth. She's a Gentile. She's not even an Israelite. The only resource she had was a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a bottle. Why her? Because God already knew her willingness and her heart to obey the Lord. She knew little of God. 
but when the message was presented, she would receive it and she would act upon it. How many of you know it's not about how much you know? It's about how much you do with what you know. There may have been, there were many widows at that time between where Elijah was and Zarephath, but only to one was he sent, and God commanded her. But none of, none of them would have responded in faith and obey the prophet and have been receptive to his word like this particular woman. You see, what I'm saying is God will pass over doubt and unbelief, but God will zero in on faith every time. And I know this for a truth. I've learned this. Whoever else doesn't get theirs, I am going to get mine. I said, whoever else doesn't get theirs, I am going to get mine. I don't want the Lord passing over me for anybody else. Amen. I'm glad when he blesses you, but how many of you know I'm reaching my faith out with what God has for me in my life? You see, the word can't, that's preached and taught, it's got to be mixed with faith or it's not going to profit. When God comes to you, you've got to learn to be receptive and open. God will come to a person whose heart is receptive. It doesn't matter what your background. It doesn't matter how little you know. You may not know Greek and Hebrew. But if you have a heart that is open and receptive to the presence of God and the Word of God, God will break through heaven and earth to get to you with His Word because He knows you're going to respond to that Word and it's going to make a difference in your life. Hallelujah. Not only was there divine appointment, there was divine advancement. Elijah gave her this instruction directed by the Lord. Make me a cake first and then you for your son. Wow. Now the problem with this is after she does that, there's not going to be any left over. In the natural, there won't be any more supply. In the natural, there's not going to be any more meal or oil for her or her son if she gives it to the prophet first. And that would have been the case except for verse 14. For thus saith the Lord. The barrel of meal shall not waste. And the cruise of oil shall not fail. In other words, there's going to be plenty of flour and plenty of oil in your container until the rains come again. How many of you know you would have gone under except for thus saith the Lord? How many of you know, you, many of you would not have made it through that previous situation except for, thus saith the Lord. You would have never known victory in the midst of that circumstance except for, thus saith the Lord. How many of you understand God's word, amen, is a powerful word when, when it moves in operation. Let every man be a liar, but let God's word be true. She would have died of starvation, her and her son, except for, Thus saith the Lord. God scheduled Elijah to unlock the faith of this widow woman. That if she would act on what was told her, the need of her and her house would be met continually, consistently. And the Bible says in verse 15, And she did according unto the word of Elijah. How many of you know there's a miracle on the other side of your obedience to God? And the result was it never ran out. Her mill barrel never ran out and her cruise of oil never failed. How many of you know God hasn't called you to fail today? God has divine appointment today that will bring divine advancement and divine accomplishment for the glory of God. And my message today is if you're in a time of transition, abrupt changes in your life, and it feels like a shifting is going on, you're uncertain about the future, God's word is going to find you right where you're at. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you today. Keep yourself in a right frame of mind. Pastor, but the water level keeps going down. Just start shouting a little bit louder. But you don't understand. The rocks that were under the water, man, they're now scorching in the noonday sun. The brook is dried up. It's all right. God's never early, never late, but he's right on time. God has a word that's coming to your address. God's got a word that's coming to right where you're at. No matter what situation or what circumstance you're in, God has a word that's coming right to where you're at. Your job is not to force the word, try to grab a hold of it. Your word is simply to open up and receive the word that's going to come into your life. Hallelujah. And sometimes the miracle that God has for you is going to come from a very unlikely source. Don't ever prejudge anything in your life. Don't ever sit back and try to look, look at a situation with... I can't go to this widow woman. Lord, Lord, what will people think? How many of you know 
you don't worry about what people think. You got to obey what God tells you to do. Don't prejudge that situation. Learn to judge the situation. Don't go around rebuking every single thing. Sometimes you're going to have to learn some patience in the middle of what you're going through and nothing's going to be rebuked. Hallelujah. Sometimes you've got to just hold steady and buckle your seatbelt. But it's in those times and those, those things that seem to last for a while and it just seems to happen right where you're at, right in the middle of where you're It's okay. God's presence is still with you and God already has a miracle in motion on the other side of what you're going through. Did y'all get anything out of that this morning? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's stand to our feet if you would. How many of you know you got to know that something good is happening even when you can't see it? I want to tell you as your pastor today, there is something good happening in every life right now even if you can't see it. I'm a guy who believes that all things are going to work together for good. I said all things are going to work together for good. To them who love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. I've done this long enough that I have seen that there are things that devil meant for evil. God's going to turn around and bring good out of it. I've watched people go through every kind of scenario in their particular life. And it's important today that we learn to discern. Okay, I might need to do some rebuking over here. But in this area of my life, I'm going to let patience have her perfect work. But what I am going to do, I want to stay with my heart open to God. I'm going to stay in the Word of God. I'm going to stay in church, and I'm not going to bail out of church because things I'm going through. I need a bigger amen. amen. Hallelujah. Yes, I've seen people go through fire. I've seen people go through the floods, but I've watched them stay in church. I look at people like Garland in the back back there. Been in this church all his life, practically. Amen. You hear him cry at times in the services. You know what he's doing? No matter what goes on in his life, his heart is open to the Lord. I know of all the men I know in my life, Garland is one of the meekest men I've ever met in my life. Tender before heart, the heart of God. What I've watched him go through, though, it would have been easy to get hard and callous and mean and drop out. I've watched him go through things. I went, Lord, how's he going to make it? But Garland keeps on crying and keeps on praying and keeps on believing God to see his goodness. Garland, and I love you for that, and I thank you for your testimony. God is a faithful God this morning. Sometime the word you get is going to be just for the next step. It's not going to be for all the way down the road, but just receive it. That's what you need. It'll be a timely word, an on-time word. Lift your hands to the Lord, would you? And let's just bless his wonderful name. Father, I thank you this morning for your goodness and mercy. I thank you, Lord, for miracles that are in motion already. Thank you for your preparations that you have for us. God, we thank you even in the times of pressure right now, the times around us, God, right where we live, that are right in our face, that are right before us, and it seems like the water pressure is going down. Lord, we stand at our water brook. That seems to be decreasing, but we stand in the middle of our water brook with hands lifted up to you and our voice of praise and thanksgiving and adoration knowing that your presence is with us even right here and right now. We know, God, you're a faithful God. We know, God, that you've already gone before us. We know, God, we don't know how. It's not our job to figure out how. It's our job to hear and obey. We know, God, there's miracles in motion for your people today. There's miracles already at work, already at play. There's a bigger picture of what you have for our own life down the road, God. There's a Mount Carmel we got to face. That fire is going to come down out of heaven. Our faith has to be tried and true and tested, God. I thank you for what you're doing in the bigger picture, in the bigger scheme of things than what we could ever imagine. Thank you, Lord, for your work in us today. Come on, somebody, just lift your voice and say, God, I love you and I thank you. Tell him right, right in the midst of your situation, I thank you, Jesus. You are at the divine appointment. 
Just because the water brook's dry, drying up doesn't mean it's not the divine appointment of God. Oh, Jesus. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to our lives, speaking to our hearts. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to just speak to, to people right now whose present situation looks just the opposite of what you, you thought God said. I want to speak to people whose brook it seems to be diminishing and lessening right where you're at as far as the circumstances go in your life. I believe God has a word that he's speaking into your life today. God is wrapping his loving arms around you. God is working in you in the midst of it in ways you can't even imagine. He's getting you ready for the bigger picture. Getting you ready for what's next in your season of life. But teaching you even right in the middle of what you're going through. He's all you ever need. And his word is coming to your life. Who can say, Pastor, this message has been speaking to my heart from, from the moment you started. And my situation right now is, is opposite. My brook is drying up. And I need a word from God in my spirit. And I need a word from God in my heart right now in my life. I needed encouragement. I needed to hear that God loves me. I needed to hear that God is on the throne in my life. I needed to hear there is a miracle in motion for my life right now. I just want you to pray for me in the middle of my circumstance and situation. I need prayer right now because I'm here to tell you God's got a word and you can bank on it today. Just lift your hand and say, that's me today. Pray for me right now. Amen. Amen. Would you just make your way to the front right now? I'm just going to lay hands on you. I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to believe for an empowerment and an anointing for God to come to your situation. Can I tell you, there's no circumstance, there's no situation that God's grace and God's word cannot penetrate and get to you right where you are. You're not going to get ahead of God. That's important. Don't get ahead of God. Don't prejudge the situation. Have discernment about what kind of a season that you are in. Because what we're talking about today is not a rebuking time. It's not a claiming, bind and loosen. It is about a time of understanding that God is doing a deep work in the, in the, on the inside of me. In the midst of my brook. In the midst of what's right before my face in the midst of what's around me immediately and I can't escape it, it's happening nothing I can do in the natural all I can do is put my trust in God but that's enough I am going to trust Him when I can't even trace Him I said I am going to trust Him when I can't even trace Him come on church, bless Him right now and let's just, before I pray before we just reach out to God Heavenly Father, I bless you right now God, I thank you that you know how to find us right where we're at. We can run, but we can never hide from you, God. We don't want to. But I thank you, God, that your word is finding people right where they're at, right in the pain of where they're at, right in the hurt of where they're at, right in the circumstance and situation of where they're at, right in the uncertainty of where they're at. Your word is finding where they are. Because, God, we're going to keep our heart right. We're going to keep our mind right. We're going to keep the right attitude. We're going to keep loving people around us. Oh, God, we're going to keep the right spirit. And we're going to keep our eyes upon Jesus, the Arthur and the finisher of our faith. Glory to God. Prayer team, come stand behind them. And while you're coming, I want you that are here, I'm going to say a corporate prayer over you. 
And then I'm just going to let you linger for just a moment during this song that Tammy sings. And I just want you to open up your heart and let God minister to you and touch you. However that needs to be for where you're at right now. Say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father. Come on, everybody. Heavenly Father. I come before you in the name of Jesus. I need you today, God. My brook is drying up. The situation I'm in, the circumstance I'm facing, there's been a diminishing, a decreasing, and I've not understood it, and I've not comprehended it fully. But God, I got my eyes set on you today. And while things seem to be working in the opposite, I know that even in this moment, there's a miracle that is in motion on my behalf. And Lord, I'm putting my trust in you today. I open wide my heart. And I thank you for all that you're working in my life in this particular situation. It's strengthening me. It's establishing me. It's bringing lasting, long-term results of what you have to do in my life, of what you're working in my life, down the road. And I'm putting my faith in you today, God. Now just lift your hand and say, Lord, fill me right now with your love and grace. Fill me with your wisdom and discernment, Lord. Fill us, God, with a joy in the midst of the situation. We're going to count it all joy, but Lord, fill us with a supernatural joy. Fill us with supernatural peace that passes all understanding that will keep our heart and mind through Jesus Christ. Lord, fill your people, God, and let them know the fingerprints of God are all over them. Lord, we're going to hear and we're going to obey. We affirm right now to you, God, we're going to hear the word that comes to us right where we are. Lord, we're going to hear it. We're going to be receptive. We're going to be obedient. We're going to respond quickly, Lord, to your presence. Oh, bless us now, Father. Hallelujah. Just keep praising him right now and just minister to him right now and opening your heart. I'm just going to pray for you and minister to you today in the name of Jesus. Grant it, Lord, upon this man of God. Thank you, Lord. The word is a lamp to his feet. He's going to hear and he's going to obey. His heart is open. His heart is receptive. He's going to do what you direct him to do, God. Because he knows your voice. And I pray right now the power of God to touch man in the name. Right now, Father, in the precious name of the Lord. These are precious servants of you today, God. And I just thank you. They're going to hear and they're going to obey. Their heart and spirit is open, God. Surround them with songs of deliverance, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, and in the midst of a lessening, in the midst of a diminishment that we don't understand, I thank you today. We proclaim with our mouth that you are faithful. You're a great and a mighty God. And your word is coming to them right where they are, God. And it's going to see them through. Bring them to a new season and a new destiny, God. I speak the power of God upon you, darling. The songs of the Lord to surround you and uphold you today. God, when everything is pressuring in upon this handmaiden of the Lord, when things, God, seem to be just squeezing everything, there's a demand that has been put upon her that seems greater than the strength she has. Lord, let her then be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. God, I thank you for an enduring spirit, God. That's going to take her the distance, God. And bring her to her miracle, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, upon Kelly, I just pray, God, supernatural discernment. The wisdom of God to permeate her mind and spirit. She can discern the season that she is in. And know, God, that you are at work in her life, Father. In Jesus' name. Have your way today, God. Wrap your loving arms around her today, God. Give her peace that passes understanding. Thank you, God, that the word is coming to right where she is. Lord, upon this brother today, God, Brother Michael, I pray, God, that you're blessing. Your word is 
come into his life right where he is right in this season of his life God I thank you that you're right on time I pray God when you close one door you're opening up another door and our faith and our trust is in you today God you're a make a way God and you're going to make a way for every situation of our life bless him today with a supernatural discernment supernatural wisdom guidance God direct his path each and every step of the day order his steps in the Lord that he may look back and see God your hand was overseeing and guiding every step of the way in the name of Jesus Lord I thank you God you've directed her in so many areas you're directing her through this God bless her today God direct her today Father I just pray your supernatural touch be upon her life Father God upon Andrea God Thank you, God. The word of the Lord is coming to her, penetrating every circumstance and situation. God, breaking forth upon her life. There will be no fuzziness or unclarity. There will be a sense of clarity and precise and accuracy about what you have for her in her life. Today, God, take her and hold her up. And wrap her in your loving arms of grace today, Father. Let her feel strengthened, God. The demands that have been put upon her. The endurance that she's had to exert. God, I thank you, God, that you're strengthening her even now in this moment in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for the power of God. Upon Becky, Lord, a heart that is sensitive. A heart, God, that is open. Lord, a heart that knows your presence. And I just pray even in this moment, God, that all that you are extracting and working in her. It will come to full completion. That which you've begun, you're going to finish in her life, oh God. The ministry you've spoken to her, God, God, it hadn't even even begun yet, but God, it's going to be a ministry of great victories and great accomplishments and great advancement in the kingdom of God for different people. And I pray, God, that you bless her today, Father. And today, give her a supernatural touch, a supernatural refreshing. Supernatural refreshing. God, I thank you for time. I thank you, God, for her life. God, for seeing her through difficult situations. Tremendous demands that have been, that she's had to exert upon situations that she's had to walk through. Tremendous endurance that she's had to know. God, like she's, strength she's had to use that she did not know she had. But God, you're strengthening her today. You're going before her today. You're guiding her today. Opening doors for her today giving her supernatural refreshment. Thank you, God, that your, her miracle is in motion. And God, she's going to see it with her eyes. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I pray you bless the saint of God today, this handmaiden of the Lord. I speak, God, a refreshment upon her. I speak supernatural rest upon her. Lord, there was tremendous exertion of every ounce of strength. Tremendous demands that have been placed upon this image. But oh God, in the name of Jesus, today is a day of refreshment. Today is a day of strength. Today is a day of the word of God penetrating. The grace of God penetrating. Circumstances. Situation. Right to where she is. Right in this moment to her heart. Giving her supernatural direction, discernment, supernatural strength in this hour. This is the woman, God, who hears you. This is the woman who hears you. Hearing and obeying. I touch you today. Oh, God. I pray a keen sense of discernment, a keen sense of the wisdom of God operating in her life. That while the brook seems to be drying up, you have what she needs in her life, God. She doesn't have to look anywhere else but to you. And you're going to bring into her life, at the right time of her life, what you have for her, God. Her heart is open, God. She wants nothing more, nothing less than what you have for her. Bless her today, Father. In the name of Jesus. God, I speak supernatural blessings supernatural touch upon Gloria today. God, I speak a refreshing from heaven. I speak a new, fresh, discerning 
of spirit upon her life, God, that she will be able to know and that as you work in her life, you're preparing her. The miracle is on its way. It's already in motion. You've already prepared it, even in the midst of the pressure that she feels right now. There is an advancement in the kingdom of God because of her life. Grant it, Father, in the name of Jesus for the glory of God. How many of you are ready to watch the hand of God work precisely and accurately in your life? I believe you're going to see it. Amen to God. Church, I want you to have a blessed week. All the teachers, I'm going to love to see it tonight. Uh, Kim Booth is going to minister for us next Sunday morning. It's the last Sunday he had opening before next January. I thought we had sneak him in. He preached for us Pentecost Sunday and was a tremendous blessing. And uh, we're going to have Michael Biggs. This was an associate pastor out of a church in Cleburne. He's been with us today. Michael, God bless you, sir. We welcome you today. Give him some love. God bless you today. Glad to have you in the house of God. Amen. I'm going to Wednesday night. Okay, now everybody say Wednesday night. I'm preaching on wow. Wow. Watchers on the wall. I'm calling for some watchers on the wall to help me intercede. It's going to be my wild team. Y'all ready for it? Don't miss Wednesday night. I love you. God bless you. Shake hands with somebody. Be dismissed in the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, Beverly.